today's recording is about two point perspective. I'm going to follow on from where we were last time. So by now you've done a one point perspective drawing where we go to one vanishing point. Then we moved on and we did a two point perspective drawing of a IKEA chair. Same drawing, same object, drawn in a slightly different way. Two point perspective is a really nice visual representation. It makes it difficult to measure from, but it, it makes your object, your product have real kind of impact and it looks really good. Uh, when you draw it in two-point perspective. Now today I hope you're feeling brave. We're going to carry on with two-point perspective. We're going to carry on with the, on quite a blocky theme with furniture because um, we've had some really good results out of this one so I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> I've done a sketch which I'll show you below very quickly just to get some key measurements and we're going to do a sort of a storage unit type thing um, and I thought today's kind of probably slightly different learning is that I thought I'd show you a little bit of dividing up space uh, using perspective. So I've got my two vanishing points, VP1 and VP2. I've got my front corner, which I'm keeping the same. Um, and then the rest of the drawing, we'll sort of build it up as we go. And there'll be some measurements, but not. I'm, I'll try and keep it to a minimum. So again, try and do this in about 25 minutes. I won't get hopefully too complicated, but let's get started. We're going to do our two vanishing points on the left and on the right. Um, I've got a better ruler today, hopefully. So that comes in at 80 millimetres. And that one comes in at 80 millimetres down. So 80 millimetres on the left, 80 millimetres on the right. And then our front corner is going to be 100 millimetres at the bottom. So there are three measurements. So I'm going to do that on my piece of plain paper now. And then we'll start constructing our drawing as quickly as possible. Now remember, you can pause this and have a repeat, have another go if you need to. Um, the real principle for me is that if you can start to see things in 3D, then it means that you can design more confidently and think that you can communicate. You don't want to be limited in your ideas by, by your, um, your worry about not being able to draw things. And perspective really helps once you've practiced it and mastered it. We don't want everything to be boxy and cuboid. However, we do want to be able to have things proportional and that's where perspective comes in. And one session we'll, we'll look at how we kind of round off and make shapes a bit more organic. But let's look at that. So I've got VP1 and that was down by 80 if you haven't got it down already. And I've got VP2 and that's also down by 80. It's going to slightly change our viewpoint. I've deliberately brought this down from where we were last time. And my front corner is in from the left by 100 mil. So that's 10 centimetres. Now again, I would often do this using tri-squares to make sure that I'm working at 90 degrees. But currently, I'm not sure what people have got available to them. So I'm just going to use a, <coughs> a straight edge rule. Um, and I'm going to draw vertically straight up my page. Right now, again, I'm not going to worry about measurement at the moment, but I am going to try and make sure that I'm running parallel to the edge of my page. So I'm running at 90 degrees as far as possible. Nice light line. Remember, the real key to success here is that our construction lines are only just visible to see and we can delete them. Uh, <laughs> delete them. We can rub them out if necessary, but it, it might not be necessary if we draw them lightly enough. Okay, so... I'm not going to start my drawing right at the bottom of the page. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a dot. Now, again, I'm sometimes drawing things a little bit darker. Don't do a great big whacking great dot like I've drawn there. Um, that's just to show you where we're starting from. And I'm then going to go from the bottom of it, from that dot, to each of my two vanishing points. Remember, this is a construction line, so it's nice and light. Sometimes I'll be drawing darker than I would like you to do. Now, remember what I've said Quite often our errors come when we're not going to the vanishing point. You have to trust perspective to work for you, particularly in today's drawing, because our view is going to be a little bit more extreme than, we, than we've done in the past. So that's quite a nice deep sort of arrow. That's the bottom left-hand corner of our shape. That's going to be what I'll consider to be the back, and this area will be what I'll consider to be the front. <coughs> now I am actually going to measure along each of those two lines, because I think that'll set us all up um, to get our drawing consistent, right? So again, if I look at my sketch of what we're going to draw, roughly, I'm gonna measure back along here, and that measurement is 90, 
and I'm going to measure along the front one there and that measurement is 150. So that was 90, that was 150, 15 centimetres, 150 millimetres. <clears throat> okay, so let's get those plotted in. Again, making sure I'm measuring right from that point. So there's 150. And there's 90. Again, I'm doing big dots so that you can see them. <coughs> Yours don't need to be quite that um, full on. Right now, I'm going to do lots of plotting, but basically what I'm going to start off with is, is a line running all the way up my page. I've got one there already. I'm going to do a long one at the back. This front one I'm going to just do a bit lightly because I'm going to actually only use part of it, but I'm going to plot that line in whilst I'm doing my vertical line. So again, remember we've talked about parallel before. <clears throat> I want to make sure that if that's my front corner, our verticals remain vertical in two-point perspective. So I can pick my pencil up and draw my line straight up. That's a construction line, so it's quite light. And again, there's my vertical line there. I'm gonna check that that's parallel check that's parallel there looks pretty good you could do that if you've got a math set at home and you've got a nice big set square in there then that's what we would ideally use um, <clears throat> because it means that you've got a 90 degree um, datum equal if you've got a drawing board even better but but we're working with our basic equipment which is all we need so I've now got a front corner two back corners I actually took that up a little bit longer than I was intending but it doesn't matter so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose where the back edge of my object is and I want it to fit on my page so I'm just going to rough that in just to give me a sense of where my line's going to go so for me we're going to just plot up here that's about 10 mil down isn't it about a centimeter mm. underestimate that it's about eight mil it doesn't matter so I'm going to take that line and I'm going to project back to my vanishing point but this is really light please construction line so it's light and again remember make sure you hit the vanishing point and you hit your plot line <clears throat> now I'm not actually going to go to that vanishing point and that's quite often what I would do but what we're going to do is we're going to step this object back a little bit <coughs> so I'm going to come part way up this line here I think I'll come to about there let's see what that measurement is that is 90, 9 centimetres. It's not quite the full length of that, I don't think. But that's going to be our front corner of our storage unit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot from that line back to my first vanishing point, to VP1. It's a construction line, so it's nice and light. Okay. Now, I can actually plot from there to VP2 as well on this one and you'll see I, I've got a sort of a different kind of angle although the measurement down of the vanishing points were the same it's much shallower feeling this isn't it and you can start to see the perspective being quite quite a, a lot more extreme than yesterday's now this is where I wanted to show you this, this particular principle. We can divide space, although we can't really measure easily in perspective, we can divide space really easily in perspective. And I want to find the middle of this area here. And the way to do that is actually to do construction lines from corner to corner. If I had a square, let me draw a square down at the bottom here. Right. And then I drew... <laughs> and then I drew from corner to corner of that square, that point there is the middle in both directions. The same applies when I put that square into perspective and I go from corner to corner, the middle is still at that point. But if you look, it's further away from the front than it is from the back. So it's not a measured, um, it's not really a measurable quantity. It's, it's about dividing that into half and then again, you can divide subsequent squares 
into halves. If you wanted to plot quarters, or eighths, or sixteenths, or thirty seconds, whatever you need to do, by using that diagonal line system, you can begin to divide space up. So that's what we're going to do here. I want to find where the middle of this line is here <coughs> without using measurements. So I'm going to go from corner to corner of that top square. We'll do this super light. So here's my, I say a square in perspective, it's obviously not a, not a square, but that would be a square shape. Okay. <coughs> So if you look at that now, you can see how extreme that distance is. That is halfway, believe it or not. But if I was to measure that, that would be two thirds, wouldn't it? A third and then two thirds approximately. So you can see the effect of something getting smaller and changing its proportion the further away it gets. Now again, this is where it's going to be really important. Take care over this one. Our verticals remain vertical. I'm going to put my pencil down here and then we're going to draw a line here. So I'm using my pencil to remind me of where my vertical is. I'm bringing my ruler across, getting it lined up, checking for vertical. Okay, so am I parallel? Now again, with a, tri with a set square that would do that much better, but I'm not doing that. So I'm going to just show you again, so you know where I'm coming to. It's going to be up through the middle of that point there. So I'll slide that across. I only need to go down to where I join that line. Okay, slide that out of the way. So what I've got is now a kind of a, a, an extended L shape. Let me darken it. I'm going to I'm going to keep all these sides. This side is now going to stay fixed. So I'm going to call those my keepers and darken over this edge only. So there we go. There's our there's our extended sort of distorted L shape and L in perspective. Side elevation job done. Okay. So we've now got the front edge, and that also I'm going to keep. So for the sake of making our construction lines a bit easier to see, I'm going to now darken that in. Just check that you go to your vanishing point. Don't spoil a drawing by being careless at this point. Okay, so the question now is how we go about plotting the back of this, this shape here. So I'm going to want that to be almost like a kind of a sideboard with a set of shelves behind it. So I'm going to go from this point here to that vanishing point and from this point here to that vanishing point. I've already gone to the other one, so that's my only option. And remember, we're being brave here. We're going to have to follow the rules of perspective and not start trying to put it where we think it should go. So here's a construction line from the top corner all the way to that vanishing point. Okay, so that went from there to that vanishing point. I'm now going to go from this one to that vanishing point. Now you see people doing this sort of perspective um, if they're designing kind of cars and motorbikes or cityscapes of the future so that they look really, uh, really ex exciting and interesting and impactful and powerful. So two point perspective and, and three point perspective, one point perspective can really be used to enhance your product. And you can see that here. This is quite a, quite a full on stretch. Now, how do we get that corner there? Basically, our back edge is going to have to be that shape there. So we look at what we know. There's our corner. I can't go to that vanishing point because I've already been there, which means that I'm actually going to go off to that vanishing point there, and that will be the equivalent of going from here to here. Where it crosses that line is going to be where the end of that plane changes. 
all right? So I'm gonna make sure, it's very tempting to go, I just draw that in. I'm gonna make sure I go to my vanishing point. So it's from that point there, off to that vanishing point, making sure I'm hitting it. And then I draw, I'm gonna do it only until I meet my next line. And then I'm gonna pop out the back so you can see where it went to. I really want to draw that line in there, but to save confusion, I've only gone as far as my next line. Okay. So here it is. That would extend all the way through to there. But I didn't want to have too many lines. Now our next bit, remember in two point perspective, our verticals remain vertical. We're gonna do our back edge. <clears throat> our back edge begins where we change that plane. So all I gotta do, there's our plane there. There's our surface. So I'm gonna bring that across, making sure that I'm parallel with my, <laughs> it's not parallel on that camera, is it? Don't know whether that's the camera or, I think that's the camera rather than my object. I'm gonna, I'm gonna run with that because on my drawing that looks correct. And then I'm only gonna go in between those two lines. Now hopefully you can see that that's an object in 3D. So that's that could be a park bench, couldn't it? If we were sticking with our blocky furniture theme. I mean, that's, that's I suppose, the benefit of doing a nice little drawing. When I, when I see a drawing of something, I can start to think, oh, that could be a, could be a, a cutlery storage rack. It could be a park bench. It could be part of a, um, a step up into a, a, a trophy award ceremony. You know, we could do a, another bit off here and then. So you begin to go, actually, I can be quite creative now that I'm able to do my 3D drawing. So there we go. There's, there's an object. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to use the process again. I wanted to show you about how we divide space. And in the same way as we use that to plot our halfway point there, we're going to now plot halfway within that surface there. So make sure you can see this rectangle. I'm going to go from corner to corner. Nice and lightly because we don't want this line to, to stay in position. And corner to corner here. <clears throat> so unbelievable well it's not unbelievable but it you can see the extreme difference here the middle of this object is here now you wouldn't measure it to there would you so what we're doing is we're relying on on our two-point perspective being correct and using that foreshortening so as this is further away in a, a more acute angle it seems much much shorter so i'm going to draw in here making sure, remember verticals remain vertical. That's my vertical line there, parallel with that. I'm gonna now draw through the middle. To create a kind of a dividing bit. Okay, now, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually plot along to create a thickness to this object. <clears throat> I say a thickness, a depth to this object. I actually want to be able to look into here. And I'm, I'm toying with the idea of giving the shelf a thickness before I do it or whether I do it afterwards. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot us a line as though this is made out of a plank of wood. And to do that, I'm gonna totally guess a couple of measurements here. If you look at what I did there, two little measurements. And those are going to be the thickness of the top and bottom plank of wood. And again, I'm going to go to my vanishing point. This is, you've really got to be precise when you're doing small lines like this. Okay, I'm going to only draw in my object now. And I'm going to do the same <clears throat> on the bottom one. So I've now got a plank at the top and the bottom. To make that look, <coughs> excuse me, 
to make that look reasonable, I've now got to give this a bit of a thickness as well. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna guess these. I'm not gonna try and spend time plotting it. So bear with me a minute on this. It's gonna be at this point. It's gonna be about the same thickness because it's it's at the same distance. So vertical, vertical. It's on parallel there. Hopefully. Yep. This one is gonna be a little bit narrower because it's further away. So I'm estimating, only going between the two lines. And this one at the far end is really quite narrow because it's further away, furthest away. All right. I was kind of eyeing in roughly how thick it was at this point here. Could do that with measurement. Right, so now let's give it its depth. So there's my internal shape now quite happy with that i'm going to darken that bit of lining because i think i'm conscious of what you can and can't see there i think some of you will know exactly what i'm doing anyway so Now, we're gonna give that its depth. At the moment, this goes on to nowhere. We need to have a back panel on this shape. So we're gonna use this vanishing point, and we're gonna use that corner, and we're gonna use that corner from those vanishing points, from that one vanishing point, okay? Now, we don't necessarily need it to go all the way along. Don't be confused. I'm looking at all these lines here now. Don't, don't be tempted to make, try and make lines join up that don't. Okay, so I'm going to go from this corner here to the vanishing point. I think what I'll do is I'm going to stop it when I hit this vertical line here because I don't need it to go any further than that. So I'm going from the corner to that vanishing point. And because I knew where it was going to go, oh, hang on, no, I've made a mistake because it isn't going to go all the way. And I've drawn it really dark, I'm getting a bit, a bit carried away with myself there, I'm not doing it as a a nice light construction line. So there we go. Nice light line. And I'm going to do the same here. Making sure I go to the vanishing point. Making sure I go to the corner. Be accurate. I'm going to plot off there. <coughs> so at the moment we've got a little bit of a view of the top. But that goes further. If you look at how deep that cabinet is. We can't go any deeper there, so we're going to use this back point. Again, not totally accurate because I'm not using the thickness, but it'll do for what we're what we're up to. Okay, I'm going to use that back point, and I'm going to go to that vanishing point. So there's our mark, and there's our vanishing point, and that's going to tell me, hopefully, where my base comes. Is it? Mm, see, it's quite close to. I wonder whether I'm better. Go I'm gonna. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna come from the top corner here. That's gonna be more useful to me, I think, because it's gonna it's gonna marry up with that. So I'm actually gonna use that top corner. Let's hold this still so you don't get motion sickness. So top corner to that vanishing point. That'll be much clearer. So we just drew those lines to that vanishing point. So where it meets, where it meets these two lines that we went to that vanishing point, that's going to be our change of plane. So from that corner to that vanishing point until you meet that line. Okay, so that's now our top. Where it met that line, I'm going to come vertically down. So remember, verticals remain vertical. And again, where that one met that line, we're going to come straight down. where I should have done my rubbing out better. Okay. 
Right, so hopefully now you can see inside the object and you can see where I've got my top two surfaces. And it could be that it's a hollow object. Let's imagine it's like a bookshelf or something. Or it could be that it's got a back on it and that would be the back. Uh, so that's that's the sort of challenge. Now I think what we'll do, for, for simplicity, I was going to plot into here as well. I think I'm going to just divide this by I into three down this front corner. One, two, three. And I'm going to plot to the vanishing point. One, two, and we'll use this like a chest of drawers. Okay, so that can be a chest of drawers. And what I think I'll do, I'll just choose. Both drawers are too long, so we're going to half this again. Now, it would be very tempting to go, oh, there's the halfway mark. Remember, we've actually got to plot this in space. So I've gone from corner to corner. I'm now going to plot this one. From corner to corner but this time I'm only going to draw where it crosses the other line that's the other way to do this although I've got my rule running from corner to corner I've actually only made the mark here because if you remember my vertical line is going to be parallel there And again, that's another example of that extreme difference because of our viewpoint. That's a long bit at the front, short bit at the back because in perspective things get smaller. And I'm going to just draw another little line very close to that because I want to divide that into two sets of drawers. All right. Now, I could go into lots more detail about creating edges and thicknesses of material, but that's not really the point of this drawing, is it? So if you look at it, you can see that we've plotted to find the middle by going from corner to corner of objects and demonstrated the foreshortening effect of perspective, particularly two-point perspective. We've used known points to plot through and to find things. So although we've got quite a lot of measurement to start off with, once the drawing happened, we're actually plotting in space and then plotting from known entities. Now, the, the last thing to do is just add a little quick bash of colour onto this. I've got myself... A packet of pencils. Um, these are these are nice ones. These are these are staidlers. I've, I've found those. Um, so I'm going to just do the same thing as I do normally, where I'm going to use two colours, and one is going to be a contrasting colour to the others. So if I choose a green and a go for a blue, just two colours. The object itself, I, I don't be tempted to kind of colour in random faces different colors you're showing tonal work here so we've got underneath here is going to be dark on top of there is going to be light let's choose this face to be a sort of a mid tone that's going to be a kind of a mid-ish tone and so we'll, we'll build that up over over a few goes I'm going to keep that front reasonably light as well so let's just have a quick go at this
Okay, so at that point, I've, um, I haven't edited my video yet, but I think I probably will speed that little bit up. I, I, what I've done there is I've just added a little bit of thickness on the sides to, to suggest that there's a change of surface there. These, uh, what I really want to do is to get some white pencil or even some sort of white highlighter pens and just show where that edge is, um, maybe standing a little bit proud. I wanted to make these a little bit darker, but again, I'm, I'm kind of conscious that I could end up with something really, really dark. And what I really wanted you to think about is how do you how do you promote the product and you show a bit of contrast without necessarily covering the whole thing in blue pencil? Um, this certainly this bit of blending here doesn't look so good on the camera. I'd, I'd do a bit more work on that. So the final thing that I'm going to do is to um, put a little bit of color underneath it now. There's lots of different ways of doing this. I'm not trying to represent a real shadow. I'm just trying to suggest that this is slightly lifting off the page. Sometimes you might do on a, on a design drawing, what they call a vignette, which is like a little bit in the, that sits in behind it that, that um, can help your product stand off the page. For quick sketching, I, I would tend to just give it a little bit of, um, bit of color around it. And again, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that this is truly representative of of shadows and in fact sometimes you might just do a slightly offset bit of shading which we would refer to as a drop shadow um, it's not really what I'm doing here. I'm just just giving it a bit of contrast really and I'm gonna do it quite quickly because I reckon this video is already long enough uh, I don't think I'm gonna get you to do an additional version of this as your home working activity I think if you can produce this and apply some some good color to it. Remember, we're looking at a couple of colors. We're not looking at tons and tons of different colors. One color plus a complementary or contrasting color, your choice. And this is about making your product stand off the page. Um, disappointing that that green's come out a little bit sort of dull on this camera. In real life, it's, a, it's got a bit more life to it than that. Uh, you know, it is what it is. The point of that was perspective. Um, again, take a little bit of time with your, with your colouring pencils, try and try and soften it in a little bit. If this was me kind of carrying on with this, I might use a slightly different colouring pencil to to, get, to really get the dark in there. I'd, I'd like to put some white highlights in. I haven't done any any really honest thicknessing of materials and edges and stuff like that because it's it would just get too complicated for this drawing. That, but really. You know, if you want your product to really look good, you need to be thinking about the wall thickness of an object. Nothing is ever really a pencil line thickness. So that's worth bearing in mind. If you wanted to push the boundaries of your drawing a little bit, think about the genuine thickness of the material. And that includes a piece of paper. A piece of paper, if you look here, I've got two bits. You can actually see where one surface is casting a bit of a shadow on another. And that's that allows us to know that that, that paper has a bit of depth. So if you really want to push your perspective drawing beyond where I've gone today, think about that sort of shading um, and we'll maybe do a little bit of practice on that later on but today that was really all about looking at how the position of the vanishing points possibly creates a more extreme view I deliberately lowered it last time we were looking here I deliberately lowered it slightly more into the middle of the object so that we were looking both up at it and down at it uh, if I if I sort of brought them even lower it would be much more of a sort of a mouse eye view looking looking more up at it would have given us a more extreme view that's worth playing with we've started today on some fixed measurements of eight of 80 80 and then 100 to give us our starting point um but that's that's worth playing with a little bit so good luck with that i've seen some really good examples sent through to me already so um crack on good luck and don't lose your nerve trust the perspective trust the plots and draw really lightly it saves on the rubbing out you see how how much effort that cost me up there because I was just getting a little bit carried away with myself and should have drawn a little bit lighter. So um, good luck. It's good fun. Cheers. Bye.